and the kind of pleasure that you can get from the world by way of wealth, power, and status is hedonia. Now, hedonia fits within a triad that I believe has become very dominant worldwide. And it's a triad of materialism, which is a very dominant worldview, held even by some religious people, that the whole of the world as we know it really boils down to matter and its emergent properties. Physical evidence is the only kind of evidence that counts. The world is a physical universe, a physical world, and we are physical beings such that we equate our very identity with our bodies, our very identity with our brains, our minds as simply something the brain does. It's a very, very widespread worldview. This is linked with hedonism. If that's your worldview, that everything boils down to the physical, then when you seek happiness, almost certainly you're going to pursue hedonia. You're going to look for it from outside by way of wealth and so forth. And so materialism is linked with hedonism, and hedonism is linked with the way of life of consumerism. The more you consume, the happier you can be. Of course, we know in fact that's not true. But the, the triad of materialism, hedonism, and consumerism is a, a worldview, a set of values, and a way of life that billions of people on the planet today are devoting themselves to. And we see this is leading to catastrophe. The depletion of the natural resources of the world, the depletion of fish from the ocean, the pollution of the land and the water, and of course, of course global climate change due to the contamination of the atmosphere with carbon products and so forth. So this triad is an experiment we've been running for about 150 years, and it's turning out to be catastrophic. And right there in the core of it is the equation of the good life with the pursuit of hedonia. But the sages of the world, East and West, ancient and modern, many of them speaking from a religious perspective, many from philosophical perspective, and now with the rise of positive psychology, we see another type of well-being being advocated, promoted, researched, and the Greeks called this eudaimonia, eudaimonia. So we have hedonia and eudaimonia, and eudaimonia is genuine well-being. I think is a very close translation, the best translation I know of. This is a quality of well-being that's derived not from what we get from the world, but from, from what we bring to the world. It's a cultivator approach, and that is rather than going out into the world and trying to hunt and gather things that will make us happy, it's rather cultivating a way of life, cultivating qualities of mind, mental health, mental balance, cultivating wisdom. And through this cultivation of a way of life rooted in ethics, which is fundamentally, I believe, an ethical way of life is one that holds the ideals of nonviolence, and benevolence, and by devoting oneself to such an ethical way of life, there's a sense of well-being that arises from that. Cultivating mental balance, cultivating mindfulness, cultivating empathy, loving kindness, patience, and a myriad of other virtues gives rise to a psychological eudaimonia, a psychological sense of well-being, whereas ethics gives rise to social and environmental well-being. And finally, the cultivation of wisdom, deep insight into the very nature of our own existence, the nature of reality. It's the kind of questions that religious people have been raising for as long as there's been religion. And so there is a strong experiential distinction between the experiences of hedonia, which are always transient, and at the end of the day, they leave us unsatisfied and yearning for more. They're always transient and they all vanish and they never fully satisfy in any kind of sustainable way. Therefore, the pursuit of hedonia by 7.8 billion people consuming more and more and more is not sustainable. That's simply an objective fact. Whereas the cultivation of genuine well-being through the cultivation of ethics, mental health and well-being, cultivation of wisdom, this is not competitive. If one group has more, nobody else has any less. Unlike wealth, power, and status, it's sustainable, it's not competitive, it invites collaboration.